few announcements. Um, the uh, Men of Faith meeting is on Tuesday at 6. We're having a fish fry and we're going to have some chicken for the one who ain't fish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, fries and hush puppies and onion rings. Come and sit and eat with us Tuesday. We have a special call sickness. Come on, Steve, come eat with us. Yeah. So, uh, um, the yard sale is going to be Saturday, and uh, it's going to run from 7 until. So, uh, hopefully, we have a good turnout. Everything, everything there sells. We hope. It'll be great. Uh, October 10th is homecoming, and we're going to have the catered. October 23rd is uh, Community Day, and it's going to last from 3 to 7. So, hopefully, that's a success. Um, Danny Godfrey sent me a, a text. He talked about it not too long ago, but they got some Christian based movies at the theater right now. And uh, the one right now is Show Me the Father. And it'll be shown today. You have to call them or go on the website to see what time it is. I don't know because I didn't check. And then they're going to have it, uh, they had it all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But then they're going to have it again on the 17th through the 19th. So it should be next weekend. So um, we need to support as Christians so that way they'll get more Christian based movies. If we don't go, they're not going to get it. And then they have um, another movie called Courageous, and it's going to be there September 24th through the 26th, and October 1st <coughs> through the 3rd. So they got a couple Christian based movies set, set up and see how it does. So association pushed for them to get it. They got them. They're going to do a couple weekends to see how it goes. And they said if it worked out, that they'd keep getting more. So, like I told you in the past, we need to feed our soul with positive things. So, I don't have any more announcements. Do you have anything? Yeah, big. Yeah, that's a big evening. So. Yard sale. I need to be here. Five times or six. If you're working in yard sale, try to be here by six. So, if you're not working in the yard sale. Don't bring your wall clock full of money and buy everything you got. <laughs> <laughs> bring your trucks. <laughs> Y'all get your hymn books and turn to page 762. <clears throat>
the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in the bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message that I'm about to, receive, that I'm about to deliver that you gave me. And Father, I ask you to just let me say what you want me to say and let everyone hear what you need them to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah. Um, I've been working on this for a while. And I worked on it, and then I stopped it, and I went back to it. And uh, God didn't stop me this week. So I said, we're going to go bring it on bring it Sunday morning. But uh, I want to ask y'all, uh, the welfare of your spiritual warfare. We're all in war. As a Christian, you're in war. You're in war seven days a week, 24 hours a day. That's right. As being a Christian, you're in war. In 1 Timothy 1.18, it says, uh, we're a good warfare. So that means have a good, you know, have a good fight. And uh, 1 Timothy 6, 12, fight the good fight. So Paul is constantly talking about warfare. Um, Paul knew what the armor looked like because he spent a lot of time in Roman jail, house arrest. So he knew he'd see, see that armor all the time. So he, 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 you know, he said, this is for that, so this is for that. He could see it. You know, he could see it. But, uh, but he, but, he, but being, a, being a Christian is a constant struggle, no matter what. Because, because the devil is always going to be after you. He's always going to cause problems against you. Um, I just want to know when I get done that I can, the Lord can say, you fought a good fight for the glory of me. Because it's all about him. It's all about the glory of Jesus. But in that scripture, the opening scripture that I read, it says four times it says against. So it's against us. It's against you. It's against you, you. It's against you. And it's, it's all the time. Uh, prayer is war. Uh, getting up here and praying isn't the easiest thing to do. Like we know that. The first time we have prayed out loud, it's not easy. It's because it's war. It's part of war. Uh, going to church every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Sometimes it's not easy. That's part of war. That's part, you know, the devil makes it hard for us. That's all part of war. Standing up here preaching is an easy thing sometimes. Like I said, all these are war. Giving tithes, doing missions, uh, sharing the gospel. Sharing the gospel with somebody you don't know. That is war. Have you ever got that feeling right before you start talking to somebody about God? You get all buttered up, all tied up. That's war. That's all part of war. But I'm going to tell you where you get some help at. You know where you get some help from. But uh, all that is war. And I'm going to tell you, any Christian that, any Christian, man or woman, worth their grain of salt, can tell you all that is war. All that is part of war. It's all part of battles. But, and, and it's all about being a Christian. It's all about being a Christian life. But I'm going to tell you about your adversary, the enemy. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's a struggle dealing with him and his demons. Because he's not by himself. I'm going to talk to you about his army here shortly. Because he has an army, just like God has an army. But he does have an army. <coughs> um, we do everything 
for God. And he will help us through everything that we go through. But uh, like I said, when we get done, I want to say I did it for the glory of him. It's not for me. It's not for my wife or anyone else. It's for, it's for the glory of Jesus. And it's just, it's just tough doing this fight. And I just want to give y'all some encouragement. But first I'm going to tell you, first thing I'm going to tell you is the devil is a liar. Okay? He's a liar. In verse 11, he talks about um, against the wiles of the devil. So he's telling you who you're fighting. You're fighting the devil. So he's breaking it down right off the river. So number 11, verse 11. That's who you're fighting. And uh, Paul tells you it's not against flesh and blood. And Paul had a lot of things done to him by bad people. I mean, he was in prison, he was beaten, he was stoned, he was starving, he was a shipwreck. You know, you read the Bible, that's some things that happened to him. And he tells you it's not against, it's not the people. It is the evil, it's the rulers of the darkness that's behind those people. And that's something that we gotta realize that every, some people are bad people, but a lot of most of the time there's something bad behind them that's pushing them. And that's that is what is is, is tough to understand. But that is what, <coughs> what we uh, have to realize. But in uh, verse 20, like I said, it's talking talk about him being a master in minds. So like I said, he's in prison while he's writing it. When Paul wrote them letters, he was in prison. I was arrested best. So, but he's, he's not telling you that it's them people. It's the evil spirits behind those people. Now, I'm not telling y'all to be scared. Ain't no polar guy. You worry about the polar guy stuff. I want you to go home and put a blanket over your head and put a helmet and shoulder pads on with a mouthpiece and none of that and hide. Because when I tell you what's inside you, if you realize what's inside you, those demons are going to be scared. Not you. So, but uh, I'm going to ask y'all a question. Who are you mad at? Y'all mad at somebody. Somebody you're not happy with. I'm sorry. Somebody who disappointed you. Someone who did some terrible things to you. But like I said, it's more than that person or that family or whatever the case may be. There's something behind them that's pushing. So everybody thinks that there's a closed system. And what happens here on earth is just, it's all man-made. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's not a closed system. Them evil spirits come in and out, and they can work people. And they can, you know, put ideals in other people's heads and push them towards you. And that is what they can do. But the devil is behind them. Okay? Number two, talks about their leader. In verse 12, it, right here it talks, talks about it being um, that the devil is their leader. And then it goes on and goes into uh, um, he's, he's the leader of their army. In Revelation 12, I'm not going into this too much, but a third of the angels fell with him. So that gives him an army. And then it talks about do um, you all remember Mark 5 when there, that, demon, that man was possessed by the demon and he was cutting himself and he run around naked and everybody was scared of him? But as soon as they seen Jesus, as soon as they seen Jesus, he was scared. Because he knew. He knew. But he was scared. Because he is the ruler of everything. He is the ruler of all. But uh, Jesus asked that guy, he said, what's your name? He said, Legion. Legion means many. Uh, a Roman unit was called a legion. And there were 6,000 troops in a, in a legion. So that tells me that that guy had 6,000 demons that he was fighting day in, day out inside, right. of, him, inside of him by calling it out legion. So he, he's telling him their rank. He's telling him about their rank where it talks about in 12 about principalities. Principalities broke down is princesses, prince. 
So you got the devil, you got prince. So you're breaking down that, it's just like our military. You know how you have like major and colonel and all this. He, the, the devil's army the same way. He got it broke down. So he got people over other people. In Daniel chapter 10 through chapter 12, um, it talks about nations being ran by demons. Countries can be, demons can come out and take and put the politicians on, on strangers and work them just like a puppet and get them to do what they want to do. I know it's hard to believe, but they can do it. Right. I'm going to go as far as say this. They can rig elections if they want to. I'm going to go that far to say that. So, uh, you know, they, they can get out there and work them on the string. But, uh, because the fallen angels, they're not just sitting on a dark cloud playing a the harp. They're, they're working evil. They're working evil. And it's, it's just something that we have to take in, you know, in our soul and let us know that. that but there's one country, I'm not saying it's the only country, but I'm saying there's one country that will not be controlled by any demon. And that's Israel. And that's because Michael the Archangel is their keeper and their defender. He's over Israel to make sure no one, no one is, is running that country. So kings and queens and presidents or whatever can can be a puppet on a string for those demons. And uh, even members of the churches can be on a string. So, but um, Ephesians chapter 2 talks about being power of the air. So, the demons can, can be power of the air. So that makes me wonder how much stuff you can re re uh, believe on Facebook or how much stuff you can believe on that you can look up all the time talking you know, on the phone and internet and if they're power in the air why can't they control the bad stuff that goes out there they can control that too but uh talk about them being in high places when uh god cast satan out out of heaven of heavens he dropped down to a lower heaven okay he dropped down to a lower 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 heaven and uh most of us just talk about, think about earth, hell, and heaven. But they're kind of like in between right now. They've been cast into the fire yet. And uh, so they're kind of in between. But um, we think about the heaven being a little bit lower. Is it like Star Wars? Star Wars is a bad movie, don't get me wrong. But I don't know about all them aliens. I probably don't believe, about, believe no aliens out there. But devil and his demons are right there. They're not in heaven. They're right below. They're right below. We're talking about them being in high places. So, uh, they will get cast into the fire. They just haven't got cast yet. Uh, number three. I'm going to tell you something positive now. Satan is a loser. That's the best thing y'all heard yet. Satan is a loser. That's right. You know, and uh, be strong in the Lord. In verse ten, be strong in the uh, no, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of His might. So that's where our power comes from. It comes from the Lord, and that's just incredible. You know, I've been preaching on this off and on for a while now. That's where our strength comes from. That's where our power comes from. Um, our adversary is more intelligent than us. He's been at it a long time, been at it 6,000 years. So that's why we have to go to the book. We gotta get our, this is our sword. That's our sword, the scripture. So that's what we have to do. Um, I know that I'd like to think that my problems are gonna get better. You know, I'm gonna think the situation will get better. If this, this person moves out of town, I guess away from me, things are going to get better. But if you read the same Bible I read, it doesn't matter who leaves or who goes where, it ain't getting no better. It ain't getting no better until Jesus comes and gets us. That's when it gets better. It's going to keep getting worse. 
Because the Bible says. The Bible says it's going to keep getting worse. But uh, one thing I have to tell y'all is a third of the angels fell, but that also means two thirds didn't fall. That means just two thirds for us. So that, that that's that's great. So there, there's more for us than against us. So I know there's more for us than against us. So, but the only only way they're for you is if you're a child of God. You know, I really believe that. You know, because Elijah said, you know, he said, him and his servant boy was looking, and the servant boy said, there's a whole lot of money. Elijah didn't get up. He said, look out that window again, boy. He got up and looked out that window again. He said, man, there's more of us than them. That's what I'm saying. There's more of us than them. Tell me that ain't good. But, uh, um, God got his, God got control of everything. Because, you know, Peter was in jail in Acts 2. And what happened? His angel. Didn't say my angel, it said his angel. And what did he do? They come down, there wasn't enough bars, soldiers, chains, wasn't nothing, none of that. He got him out, got to bust that door open. He said, come on out, you know. So I said, go get my man. And he went to, if his angel went to get him. So I really feel if you are a child of God, you have an angel. I'm not so sure if you're not one of his children that you have an angel. But I know if you're his, you got one. Sorry. You got one. You got one. Um, I'm going to start closing here, but Ephesians 1 19, I'm going to read this verse to you, and I'm going to read it through 22, because uh, when I read this, I think y'all get a little happy. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to, uh, to, to us were, who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought, wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead? And set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And hath put all things under his foot, and gave him to be head over all things in the church. Tell me that in my four is that. So I'm going to tell you, victory was won 2,000 years ago. 2,000. And the reason being is, when Jesus died, went to the tomb, and raised on the third day, that was victory for everybody. That's when the victory came. Okay? That's when our salvation, that's what, through our salvation, that's what we believe. But that's when victory is won. So no matter what happens, that is our salvation. That's what we believe. As Baptists, that he died, rose again. You know, that's part of the belief. But uh, when he went through that middle tier that I was just talking about a little bit ago, after he rose on that third day, I don't think they. I read that he could be this point to this point like that. But he said they they watched him ascend, and that tells me that Jesus put it on cruise control. And just went on up there, went up there, just like this, nice and easy, nice and smooth. And when he went through the devil's dominion, the only thing they could do was bow and say, He is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and watch him rise. So, uh, but, uh, but that is when our war was won. We have to just remember. That Jesus is on our side. And two thirds of evil, two thirds of angels are on our side. Mm -hmm. So no matter what battle we're in, no matter what we're going through, Jesus and our angel will get us through. We just got to put faith in 
confidence in him and he'll carry us through. Because we all got battles. No matter what. We're all fighting. But like I said, when I get done, I want to be able to say, I fought the good fight. I fought the good fight for the glory of God. But I just want to tell you, today is the day of salvation. If you don't know Jesus, I can introduce you to him. And uh, the doors of the church are open. Church. Amen. Amen. If, uh, if everybody's uh we're just gonna have a quick vote. If you uh if you all approve, raise your right hand. Amen. 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 Uh can everybody come up and give a fellowship of right hand fellowship? <laughs> Make it.